Perfect Days is nominated for Best International Feature at the 2024 Academy Awards, and it might just be one of the most beautiful films in recent memory. Perfect Days is the latest feature film from acclaimed uh, tour Vim Vendors, and it is likely his greatest film in literal decades since Paris, Texas. This seems to be more or less agreed upon across the board, which is an enormous testament to the brilliance of this particular film. The premise of the film is very simple. Essentially, it follows a toilet cleaner played by Koji Akusho as he goes about his day-to-day -day life. Interestingly, the premise around these public toilets in Tokyo was originally pitched to Vim Vendors as uh, a potential series of short films. This was during the height of COVID and initially Vendors didn't have much interest, nor was he able to travel to Tokyo to have a look. Once he dove in a little bit deeper though, he realized that these public toilets were not the same as he was used to in Berlin. They were designed by renowned architects and the individuals who were responsible for cleaning them were treated with respect and viewed their job as essential. Very different than much of the Western world and their view of such work and of such facilities. Once vendors arrived in Tokyo, he knew that there was something worth writing about here. And in tandem with his co-writer, Takumi Takasaki, they created this script for Perfect Dates. As I mentioned, the film essentially follows Koji Akusho as he goes about his daily routine. He starts in the morning by tending to his bonsai. He goes to work and cares deeply about doing the best job that he can. He stops at the park to look through the trees and see the sunlight filtering through these trees. There's actually a word for this in Japanese called Komorebi. And while the direct translation is, like I said, sunlight filtering through trees, you really can't capture that idea, that image in English. It's something that you truly need to see and the film allows us to sit with these visuals and to sit with Koji Akusho. Interestingly, the first 10 minutes or so of the film have no dialogue. We are simply observing, we are simply experiencing alongside our protagonist. That being said, we do have a brilliant soundtrack, including a song right at the beginning of the film, House of the Rising Sun by The Animals. Once I heard that song, I knew that I was in. I knew that this was going to be a film that would speak to me. And we even have a Japanese rendition of that same song later in the film. Outside of the animals, we have tracks from Patti Smith, the Rolling Stones, the Kinks, and of course the titular song Perfect Day from the late Lou Reed. So here we have a film that is obviously sparse in its dialogue, but comes alive in these little moments through music, which is part of what brings 
Goji Akusho's character Joy. Yakusho also finds Joy in going to his local bookstore, picking up a book and reading before turning out the lights. And essentially what this film aims to do is show the beauty in those little moments. We're told almost nothing of Koji Akusho's backstory, but we feel as though we know him deeply and intimately. Here is a man who is able to work hard every day, but find fulfillment in that to go to the park, eat a sandwich, or eat his lunch, and look through the trees and find beauty in that, to listen to a record on tape, to read a book, to tend to his bonsai, these simple things in life that provide tremendous depth and meaning. It's important to note, though, that this doesn't mean that he's putting on a facade of this sort of faux happiness. He feels pain, and he feels it deeply. Without going into too much detail, we learn eventually through the story more about his family connections or lack of connections there. We learn more about potential romance or heartbreak, a friendship or loss of friends, and all of these things simply show us that it is not about being happy without fail. It's about acknowledging these painful aspects of our lives, which in turn allow us to appreciate these little things even more. By the time that the film ends, we find it hard not to connect to Yakusho's character. The final shot, again, is without dialogue, but ends up being one of the most powerful moments in cinema of the year. In fact, Yakusho's performance across the board is deserving of so much more praise than it's received. I'm thrilled that Perfect Days did receive the honor of a nomination for Best International Feature, but this singular performance was also one of the strongest of the year. In many ways, this film is a meditation. It is a reflection on life, on struggle, and on finding beauty. If you're looking for an action-packed adventure that hits every traditional narrative beat, then maybe this isn't for you. But if you're looking to sit with Koji Yakusho, if you're looking to reflect on your own life, then there are, quite frankly, few projects that do that as well. If you watched this whole video, thank you so much. Obviously, I do appreciate it. Please like the video and subscribe and comment. Do all of those fun things and watch the next one. Cheers.